Hi, this is Kirk Spencer, the host of K-Wave 6 Radio. The following recording is an edited version of an inter... Well, it was supposed to have been an interview with Rosemary Dalton on Wednesday the 18th of February. Rosemary Dalton, who is a very punctual person, who actually prides herself on being punctual, ready to do whatever she has agreed to do, did not make the interview. And we had spoken about doing this interview just merely hours before it was due to air. Uh, I waited 20 minutes and she never did appear. As a matter of fact, when the show ended and she and I are on the same time zone, when the show ended is when she woke up and even her youngest child, who I believe is not old enough to go to school, uh, she said, both of us overslept and it's highly unusual that both of us will sleep so late into the day. So if you can understand that there is no such thing as a coincidence, that there is a higher power, some of us prefer to call it God, some of us call it the the Great Spirit, whatever your particular title is, then you can understand the title that I'm using for this particular if you want to call it broadcast, uh, or my <laughs> rendering, is called Nobody Cares, But All Is As It Should Be. It's pretty self-explanatory, and I hope that you'll understand it and uh, see if how it works for you in your life. Even Rosemary Dalton, who actually is a ordained minister, she listened to it, and her first words out of her mouth were, wow. So, assuming that our great spirit wanted this to be said, and he even kept her and her child asleep, so this would be said, then it was all worthwhile. I hope this hits home for you. Take care. Today, I had a thought. I had um, a thought, and I'm going to open the phone lines if you want to call in and discuss this. This is something I was going to do if I didn't get a guest, which apparently I did not get a guest for today. And the topic is called, Nobody Cares, but All is As It Should Be. Kind of a weird title, I know. Uh, I ran across um, a poster someone put up in Facebook just recently. And it's a picture of like three, well, one quarter of the globe of the Earth. And it's uh, from outer space. And then there's a highway sign that says, I'm paraphrasing, says 7.3 billion people and nobody cares. And basically what I'm going to assume it was all about at this point, because I don't have the photo in front of me, I wasn't prepared to do this particular segment. It was just a thought that I was working on in my head. Um, Speaking of which, before I get into just a thought, if you want to call in, the telephone line is 347-677-0812. Once again, that is 347, area code 347-677-0812. 0812. Or if you want to call in by Skype, just go to our webpage or Blog Talks page and click on the Skype icon and follow the prompts to get into the show from there. Your choice. You can call by Skype or call by phone. And the phone again is 347 677 0812. We can talk about this freely and openly. Just do so with respect, please. Anyway, the the sign that I'm talking about in its implications are talking about how there are, in general, because there are many people that do care about what goes on here on Earth, but in general, we're talking about a population, a total world population of people that don't seem to really care about where their future is going. In other words, as long as I have a house, as long as I have food, as long as I have my car, if you have any of these items, and 
uh, as long as I can live comfortably to make it short, I really don't care about what's going on. People are going to do what they want to do anyway. Politicians are going to do what they want to do. And as George Carlin, I know you hear me say a lot about George Carlin, but he says, you know, if you're the one who voted for that person and that person is now in office and you don't like him, you're the one who's responsible. The person that didn't vote for him is not responsible for your candidate. You are. I know. Some people say, no, that's backwards, whatever the case may be. But you're the one who voted for that person or those persons, and they're the ones who's causing it, and you're going to say, well, we we can't do anything about it. And people continue to say, well, if you vote, if you vote. Now we go to Einstein, who says, hey, we can't get ourselves out of this problem that we're in by using the same methods that got us into this problem. So voting is good, but you can only do so much. But then again, there's the theory or the beliefs that no matter who you vote for, it's basically all rigged anyway. And I forget who actually said this. It is a quote from someone. It says it doesn't matter who's doing the voting, the actual uh, power lies in those who do the counting of the votes. Because how many people that actually vote actually get a chance to be there when they count these votes? Or if you're doing it electronically, who is there to see how the program is actually written and who, you know, in other words, if you vote for candidate A, does it actually go to candidate C, who's the favorite of maybe the Electoral College or whoever else is out there. But it comes back to uh, do we really care and how much do we care and what are we doing to make things better? Now, there are people, I was talking with them, with one of my students yesterday who actually happens to be a psychologist, albeit that she's young, she's in her mid-30s. And we oftentimes get into conversations um, ranging from, well, her English class and uh, all the way into psychology and sometimes into metaphysics. Uh, her father was a shaman here in Mexico. So she has learned some, and she's she's actually asking me to teach her some uh, of the things that I do and know whether I practice it or not. But at any rate, um, we were talking about this subject yesterday in the class for a short time, not for the whole class, but shortly. And we were talking, she didn't like the title, Nobody Cares, but all, you know, all this as it should be. The title comes from actually that poster, and all as it should be, comes from a conundrum, if you will, that goes through my mind about what, um, how should I put this? There are prophecies from anything from the Christian Bible to the, uh, Hebrew Tanakh to Nostradamus to Mothership into Ash. You can go on and on with this, and some of them are not even related to uh, or associated with any particular religion. And it seems to be that the majority of these uh, prophecies, if you will, are pointing to the time that we live in currently where there's a great deal of apathy, there is uh, a great deal of civil unrest, there is government corruption, and you know, depending on which text you're reading it from, it can to be talking about why our situation, the United States, Europe, and wherever else is going on in the world. And the, the conundrum that I have is that, okay, Nobody seems to really care, general statement. Uh, the majority of people uh, don't care. And getting back to my conversation with my student from yesterday, she was talking about, well, I can only do so much. 
I only have so much money, and I just put it up on the board, and I just went, um, poor, homeless, corruption, and I just made a very short list, maybe of about six or seven things. And I asked people, or I asked her, to, to identify what we should throw money at. And I said, people throw money at the poor. People throw money at the homeless. People throw money at organizations to fight corruption. People throw money at global climate change. But all of these things, people think that, okay, I can just give money and it will benefit us in the long run. And we think that money is going to be the thing that, okay, I gave and somebody else will do something about it. Where is that money going to? If you know about charitable organizations, many of them actually take 80% of what you give. So if you give $1, say, to a charitable organization, only 20 cents of that gets to someone out there that needs that money. 80% of that goes to whoever's running the organization and their people and to pay for their whatever they have, computers, electricity, the building that they're in, and usually, usually, not always, but usually a great deal of these organizations have an office space that makes your house actually look like you live in poverty yourself. But that's okay. I gave money. And that's how I deal with it. But how about you getting involved? Oh, how do I do that? Well, that's relatively simple. It's relatively easy. This is something that I've been talking about here. This is the reason why I was doing the Thoughts for Growth. Trying to help people to understand that your thoughts are always what precede your actions. No thoughts, no actions. So if you change your thoughts, if you help another person change their thought, because as I spoke to my my student, and we actually came to an agreement on this, was many people, many people out there, everywhere actually, are poor in their mind, in their ways of thinking. You can get a person to uh, think something and it will change their lives. It, it kind of goes back to the give a person a fish and fed them a lifetime. Teach somebody how to think better, think their way out of a problem than we do um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, we just got a message here. I am, our friend Andy's on the line. Look, if I'm going to finish my thought here real quick, is that uh, if we teach a person how to think, how to get out of their problem, out of their situation, then they can be better. And I'll give you a quick example. Back in 2004, I was uh, traveling... Okay, hold on. Let me get this on here real quick. Hello, Andy. Hello. Hello. Oh, well, got somebody there, but they're not speaking. Okay, anyway. Uh, to finish with my thought here real quick, to see if anybody pops in, I'll leave the line open. Um... The the thought that I had was, now, back in 2005, I was traveling around the United States, and I ended up in, longer story short, I ended up in Phoenix, Arizona, and I ran out of money. And I ended up in a homeless shelter, and people, the people that were administrators of the homeless shelter looked at me and says, what are you doing here? And I said, what do you mean, what am I doing here? She says, well, she says, look around you. Um... And uh, 
see the kind of people that you're here with? And I went, yeah, but she says, so why are you here? And I said, well, I ran out of money and sleeping under a bridge wasn't going to be my way of living. So I just wanted a place where I could sleep, take a shower, and I could find a job and get myself back on my feet and go, which I did within two weeks, just working day jobs. And then I finally, through one of the day jobs, found a permanent job uh, working as an accountant, which is what I used to do for quite some time. Worked there for quite some time. I ended up in a month. I had an apartment. Six months later, I had my own apartment, and uh, just life continued to get better. So, yes, you have a downfall, but are you going to let that defeat you, or do you actually continue to think that, no, this isn't my life. I can and I will do better. And this is the thought that I'm talking about here with um, being able to change your thoughts. If you change your thoughts and say, this is what I want, this is what I'm going to have, and of course, not selfishly, not greedily, where you're just going to put somebody else down and, you know, karma, whether you believe in the word or not, it's just another way of saying what goes around comes around. We all know that one here in the West. Whatever you put out is what comes back at you. So basically what I'm saying here is not only can you change your life, you can help other people change their lives. Now, let's get back. Talking about people who maybe they have a good job or they own a business, whatever the case may be, they have a lot of money. But they also have five or six houses, they've got cars, they've got boats, they've got maybe a small yacht. They've got, they've got, they've got. But their houses, they're not renting. It's just, okay, if I go to this country or go to that state or whatever, I have a house. It's not rental property. It's just, if I go there, it's already waiting for me. I have cars. I've got a BMW. I've got a, I've got a Ferrari. I've got the latest Bugatti Veyron. And I've got uh, a ship sitting off the coast of California. And I love to share, to sail around the world on occasion. I take a year off and do a vacation. It's <laughs> I, I kind of compare these people like with Warren Buffett, one of the richest people in the world, the top five richest people in the world. And um, what's his name? Carlos Slim. These people live in their homes that they had when they were building their financial empires. <laughs> Uh, what's his name? Um, Warren Buffett still lives in the old neighborhood he lived in 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, Carlos Slim lives in the house that all of his kids grew up in, and that's all he does. These people are not poor in mind. They continue their financial empire growing, and, well, of course, that's part of what they do because they're on... Um, uh, what do they call it? Wall Street and other trading boards, and they are they have to keep the companies growing. Why? Because they have investors. So if the investors want uh, some payback for their investment, so the company has to grow. It cannot remain stagnant, and it definitely should not fail. So here are these people that are just they're not poor in mind. They're just constantly working at what they do and enjoying what they do. They don't have, at least not by what I've read, a collection of houses, cars, ships, boats, yachts, all of these things that are just for pleasure. What they have are things that are useful in their lives. So we're here looking at people that are not poor in uh, in, in in thought and in action, but are actually doing something with their lives other than collecting objects. Um, now, let's get back to 
prophecies and whatnot. So, um, hold on just a moment. I'm getting a message I need to answer real quick, so please hold on. We'll be back in one minute and 13 seconds. Thank you for listening to the Freedom Talk Radio Network and the Truth Police with your host, Andy Peacher, and author, Timothy Spearman. Live from Grimsby in the UK and Toronto in Canada every Saturday at 5 p.m. UK time and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time in the USA and Canada. Call into the show when the phone lines are open. UK call-in number 0131 618 7778. And from the USA and Canada, call 315 462 4100. Visit the station's website on www.freedomtalkradio.co.uk and author Timothy Spearman's website www.shakesaspear.com That's www.shakesaspear.com Look at Tim's recent books Odds on Favourites and Butterfly Dreams found on the homepage and the books tag. Okay. Welcome back to to the guest. <laughs> Welcome back to the host. Uh, we're here. Uh, we don't know we're here. And the good thought of the day where somebody went from having no numbers to play with to having loads of numbers to play with. I think that was a good example there, Kirk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you finally opened your side of the line. I had actually opened this line a little while ago and hello, 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 waiting, waiting, and I left the line open because I figured it was you. So anyway, we have with us the executive producer of Freedom Talk Radio Network, Andy Peacher. Welcome. I had to give you a drum roll. Anyway, we're I was, here. I was really, really looking forward to listening to Mums um against um, you know, family abuse because these people, um, there's millions and millions of them called mums. And, you know, the dads take big action around the world, but the mums don't seem to do much. So, especially in the UK, I was really looking forward, you know, to inspiring UK mums to go together and do what that lady's doing. Um, um, I'm, I'm just assuming it's over in the, the States. Uh, so that would have been good. But I, I was quite intrigued by your your little story about the homeless. So where should we go next? Well, basically, well, first of all, yes, I did want to get Rosemary on here because uh, she has done a phenomenal amount of work in a very short time. And she went from planning to getting this thing uh, registered with the state. She has members already. She has, yesterday she went to the state capital of Missouri in the United States, and she actually testified before, I think it was a Senate board or something. I forget all the details that she was trying to tell me last night, but I was tired. <clears throat> and she wanted to tell me all about this stuff last night, and I said, no, do it on the show. Make it fresh. So she said she would be here, and she and I are on the same time, uh, in the time same time zone. So I said, okay, I'll see you at that time. Call me five minutes ahead of time. And so far, she still isn't here, so I don't know. So I just thought I would fill in the time for those who are still here with some thoughts. Unfortunately, she's not here, so I guess we'll have to reschedule her for a time in the future. But the thoughts that I was actually talking about was the some things that I've been working on in my head mostly and we started talking about this a little bit with the interview with Michelle Vaughn about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago and uh, she'll be back on next week with Chad and I think we're going to continue this thought but uh, from the point of view of uh, metaphysics just to make it a short title and uh, talk about what is going, uh, what we believe is going to happen. And Jed, who's an astrologist, he's going to come on and tell us from the astrological point of view 
what is coming up as soon as March. Now, there's some things we can see. Uh, many people that I know are feeling there is an energy change going on in the world. Uh, those who are probably going, ah, psh, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Well, whether you believe in it or not, uh, those of us who've been living and practicing this kind of stuff for years know that there is something going on through just our simple theme of practice and uh, understanding things and checking things out. If you want to do it, you even say it in a scientific way, which is we test and we find out what is and we know what to look for and what to accept as reality. Anyway, without going on any further, Sir Andy, tell us what's going on over there. And uh, oh, um, you and I are actually talking about doing a podcast together. Uh, and I know you got the email I sent off to a certain person. Uh, and what do you see about our podcast for next week? And if you want, you can tell us tell a little bit about what we have already planned. Yeah, that'd be good. I'm looking forward to that. I was um, I was going out today, and then I needed food, so I ended up phoning a friend. I got on the internet and thought I only need enough for a couple of days, so get it delivered tomorrow. So I don't need it now. I'm all right. Um, but basically, your thoughts are are very important for a tool of survival. I think because when someone gets angry. Um, and it, you know, and you press the wrong button, it can actually affect the whole of your life. Now that button could be on the computer, it could be you said the wrong thing, you did the wrong thing. So I always say is watch what you say. You can't always watch what you think, um, but it can be life changing. And um, a bit like the weather, the weather is definitely life changing over here. We, you know, we're getting all these funny signs. You know. Um, it's getting, it's still getting dark at 5 p.m. at night, um, and, and it would ordinarily be sort of late now until about half past five, six in the evening. So there's yeah, all strange stuff happening. Mhm. Yeah, that's something that for our listeners, whoever's out there listening, um, we're and, and Andy and I have been talking about uh, climate change and what has been played on for well over 50 years now, over 60 years actually. I mean, there, Hollywood has made movies on it, and I'm not talking about just 2012. I'm talking about a movie uh, was called When Worlds Collide. That's from 1951, and uh, of course Hollywood. You know, they can actually take a step sideways on a lot of the stuff. They take something that is real and they uh, embellish on it and they make a movie. So you know, my ex-wife used to ask, why do you always look for uh, messages in movies? It's just entertainment. And I'm going, well, you've missed what Hollywood actually tries to do. Actually, Hollywood does try to use its media to inform people of course, they embellish on it to make it grand. I can call back, at least I hope you will. Anyhow, the the idea in doing these podcasts, or at least next week's podcast, if we can get our guests lined up, um, it's understandable that some of them may not want to get into it because it's a little bit too metaphysical for them and they're more on the science side uh, of life. So we're still working on getting our guests together for that and we want to talk about what is going on and what is possibly, and saying possibly because we don't have any proof that it does exist, but from... 1951 movies when worlds collide uh, to an article that appeared in Popular Mechanics, I believe it was Popular Mechanics or Popular Science, one of the two, uh, but it was way back when. Uh, it was talking about uh, a, a, 
Well, some people call it a rogue planet. Some people call it Hebrew. Some people call it Planet X. Uh, it was written about in the late 1950s that this uh, star, this constellation, whatever you want to call it, will come and visit us again, but it won't be until 50 years. Well, 50 years is past. And... Uh, everything that I've read about it over the years has talked about that some people say you cannot see this rogue planet uh, from the naked eye or from a distance because it is, is below the visible light spectrum, and I, I hear all sorts of different things. But what I'm actually wanting to get to is that the... Um, one of the programs that I watch almost daily, and it comes from all of a science background, is that the sun is always giving shots of the sun. And it always seems to be that on the opposite side of the sun, there always seems to be solar flaring. There always seems to be something that is always going off in the opposite direction from us. And if you look at these videos, you'll see that usually we have a quiet side on our side of the sun. There aren't any sunspots, so there's very few uh, coronal holes are small. They're not doing a whole lot, but when they do appear, they give us um, earthquakes and a few other things. But nothing as high is or as high in magnitude as is was, was has been seen in Japan a few years ago. Uh, but the other side of the sun is very active. There's always these flares and uh, these ejected material and all that kind of stuff. And from the material that I've ever read about Nibiru and from uh, Planet X is that this, if you want to call it a star or sun or dwarf planet, whatever, it is comes down and goes below Earth, below the sun, and below us, and then it swings back up and out. And they say because of it, the way it travels, it kicks and pulls a lot of debris in front of it and behind it. And I am looking for someone who can actually say yes, it is kicking up a lot of dust and a lot of what we would call asteroids, comets, meteors, and all kinds of other stuff that we've been seeing an increase, uh, increased amount of these objects coming into our atmosphere over the past couple of years. And three, four years ago, we didn't hear too much about uh, meteors and whatnot coming into our atmosphere, uh, we especially didn't see such things as we've seen. Uh, the most famous one that I've seen is the one in Russia where it just blew out windows and exploded into the air and one who hit the ground and left a nice big crater and all the rest of those things. We haven't seen that before the last three years, but now they're just coming in constantly, constantly, constantly. It used to be 30 years ago that you would get some information uh, about uh, a meteor shower and you would go out to a dark area uh, if you had to and you would watch the meteor showers just fly by over our atmosphere, none of them actually entering our atmosphere. That was fine. 30 years ago, that was about the biggest thing that you ever heard about. At least that's the biggest thing I used to hear about on a what I would call local or close scale. Now we're sitting up here looking at and hearing about meteors coming into our atmosphere, crashing through, burning up in the sky, and some of them are actually hitting the ground. Not many of them, thank goodness. So are these things what were prophesied is this is the way it should be? And these are the things that I want to address in the not-too-distant future. So, uh, with next week's program, if I can, if Andy and I can actually get other people 
people to come on. This will be a podcast, and uh, we will talk about this hopefully starting next week. If we have enough uh, listeners on the podcast, maybe we'll just go live with this and talk about it online. This is not to scare anyone. It's just what is out there and what are we not being told. Because, as I said, 1951, the movie came out in late 1950s. One of the popular science or popular mechanics um, magazines put out an article about it in 1983. And somewhere in my blog, I actually found a copy uh, of the newspaper article, it was I think it was a front page or something like that, about NASA finding uh, a planet or a system, whatever it is, coming our direction. And it was from the Washington Post, I believe it was, so it was a reputable newspaper, at least back then anyway. And it has been basically thrown underneath the carpet, underneath the blankets, every place else they could cover it up ever since, even to the point that NASA has had one of their scientists going, no, it doesn't exist. But 30 years ago, it did exist. So which one is it? And we're... He just sent a message that he had a phone call he had to take. So uh, that's understandable. But... The, one of the things that got Andy involved in this was that he was talking about where he lives in England. He says the sun has not just um, changed its position or its timing for uh, sunsets. And we didn't get a chance to actually ask him too much about that, but I guess we'll talk about that a little, little bit later. Is that his his sunsets are still an hour off, and he's been telling me about this since this past fall. So this is not something that's just recently happened. It's been going on for quite some time. If you look in YouTube, you will find where the Inuits, or some of us call them Eskimos, that live around the North Pole, who uh, you, know, you live in a barren area and your livelihood is on fishing, <laughs> basically, uh, and you only have maybe a few hills or mountains nearby, so you have to navigate your travels by the stars. And they have said, and there are other scientists that are actually up there on their ships and whatnot, they're saying that the Inuits and the scientists are together and saying that the Earth's position has changed. The, the stars they used to navigate by used to come up over these certain set of mountains. Now they're not over there. They're some distance away. And um, then they're also talking about uh, the forest fires that have been going on in California are literally getting caught up in the upper atmosphere and they're coming down on the uh, icebergs, or the ice, kids call them icebergs, just for short. Um, they're coming down on the icebergs there, up there at the North Pole. And they're showing these pictures in the videos where they're talking about the soot from the California fires are coming up there and they're coating the ice. How does that affect them? He says, because the soot is dark colored, and now it is covering the ice, that slight change in color means now that the soot is absorbing the sunlight, which is causing more heat to the icebergs, which is causing them to melt faster. So here's another reason why your ocean, uh, the oceans around the world are actually rising, because all of this soot and all of these other debris uh, including smog and whatever else, is landing on parts unknown to you until now. So how do we change our thoughts? Yes, we can give money to somebody, but is that actually stopping the forest fires? Is it stopping you from burning your oil-consuming car or truck or whatever else? 
can we continue to live our Western way of life and still be able to uh, plan for a future where our children and their children will actually have something to look forward to in a positive way? Or are we going to continue to live our lives in a way that just says we're comfortable and the heck with the environment, the heck with the world, the heck with all the violence that's going on everywhere in the world, and we're just going to go. Oh, everything is wonderful, and everybody else has problems, but that's their problems. Well, that's what a lot of people said in many different wars, many different conflicts that were going on around the world, and when it comes to you, then what? You're going to be asking somebody else that says the same thing you've been saying all these years is, that's your problem, and you're going to be begging for help. We live on a planet together. Are we going to help each other, or are we going to go, that's your problem, I have nothing to do with it? This is our home. This is our planet. We can't escape, and those who can in space shuttles, in space stations, whatever else is going on, are they going to be able to take you part of that 7.3 billion people on this earth? No, you're not going to be a part of that group. We have to do something. Whatever we do now not only affects our future, immediate future, but our distant future and our distant, distant future. Because... If nothing else, we do have to think about what is going to happen with us, even without thinking about the physical. If you have a religion and you believe in there is something after life, how do you think we are going to be, if you will, judged for what we did or did not do while we were here? All of this comes together, both here and in the distant future, whatever that distant future brings. Change your mind, change your thoughts, then your actions will follow whatever your thoughts are doing. Unfortunately, we did not get our interview today with Rosemary Dalton, so we will have to try to connect with her in the future time, uh, even if I have to do a pre-recorded show with her. <laughs> just to make sure that she shows up. And uh, we'll talk about MAFA, Mothers Against uh, Family Abuse, at a future time and date. But I hope today's thoughts will inspire you to change your thoughts and to help other people change their thoughts. You don't have to spend your money to help people to change their thoughts. Just help them to see life differently and bring some value into their life. Teach them how to be happy uh, to get that attitude of gratitude, to be thankful for what they do have so when something more comes, they can be grateful for that and they can be grateful for whatever comes after that and continue and watch things change. But be a part of that change in your thoughts and your actions. We do have the ability to make change may not be grand, but whatever our future is, on a one-to-one -one scale, personal scale, or as a grand scale, we have the ability to make change. Start today with your thoughts. Take care, be well, and we'll see you again next week with our uh, future show with, with uh, Michelle Vaughn and Chad Meeks. Take care and be well. As we close today's show, we at K-Wave 6 Radio thank you for being with us today. Also, we ask that you follow our blog, Twitter, and Facebook links, and our Thoughts for Growth podcast episodes, which air on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern. Links to follow us and to our media players can be found at www.kwave6radio.tk. Again, that's kwave6radio.tk, 
or www.kwave6radio.weebly.com. Check out what's happening at Freedom Talk Radio and SETV by visiting their site at www.freedomtalkradio.net. And as always, all the best.